Okay, so I've been contemplating the nature of power and trying to figure out what type of ethical system you could derive from the nature of power. So what I decided to start off with is the definition. So I tried to come up with a definition of power, and the definition I came up with is the ability to help or harm people towards their ends. And this makes sense. If you want something done and someone can help you, they have some degree of power over you. Like, I think the ability to help or harm others towards their ends strikes me as a plausible definition of power. And from what I've seen of other definitions, it's pretty much in line with that. So the second premise is people who are interested, who would even be interested in something like a power ethics, are interested in maximizing relative power to other people. Power is inherently a relative thing. Like, if everyone has power, then no one does. Like, even in democracies, you do have people with, like, higher levels of power than other people. In corporations, there's always going to be some form of hierarchy. Like, society just naturally has these things. Power is inherently relative. Now, if you accept the premise that power is relative, and the power is the ability to help or harm people to people towards their ends, there are two ways you can increase your power relative to other people. You can either maximize your abilities, or you can minimize your desires. And it's the second part that I think a lot of people tend to forget, and why, like, power gets such a bad name in, like, general society. So, like, power isn't necessarily immoral, power isn't moral. It's really what you do with it in the end, and, like, I I know that's, like, pretty obvious, but given, like, how a lot of people who are interested in power come off, like, that's kind of important to say. Like, power is amoral. Depending, It depends on how you use it. Now, the reason power gets a bad name is because a lot of people who don't remember the second part, that you have to minimize your, your desires as well, uh, end up, like, through their avarice and their various sins, and using the abilities they've gained to screw over other people. And this is why power gets such a bad name in, like, a lot of media. Uh, Now, if you agree to the second premise that minimizing desires is part of increasing your relative power over other people, well, then the question becomes, why do you want power? If you don't want anything, why would you want power? And from here, you can fill in a couple of different entries, but I think the most persuasive thing is just to help people, because it's just intrinsically good to help other people towards their ends, to whatever extent you can, or to minimize other people's ability to screw over other people. So, like, if you don't want for anything, you can use your abilities to more or less just help other people because of some sort of intrinsic nature. Um, yeah, I think that makes sense. So...